Welcome to Heretic Dave 40k and my new 10th edition Tuned Index review. Um, if you like the content, smash the like button, feel free to hit subscribe, and you can also become a YouTube channel member. Mostly I do battle reports, but as 10th editions come out, I thought I'd best do some kind of review thing. And I collect Tyranids, so let's run through my thoughts with the new Tyranids. Starting off with the army rules, as you can see here, they've got Synapse and they've got Shadow in the Warp. Synapse has always been a thing for the Tyranids, and it's always helped them essentially be fearless or, or help with leadership um, and it's continuing that theme in 10th edition obviously morale's gone out the window uh, but battle shock is a thing so essentially if anything's within six inches of a synapse model you get to do the battle shock test on 3d6 instead of two so basically keep your army in synapse or they won't be as effective basically the same as knight except for they used to run away instead of be less effective but if they're running away they're not very effective so synapse is basically doing the same sort of thing you don't really want things getting battle shot because then you can't hold objectives and uh, you can't use stratagems on them and things. Um, so that's good. Keep your army in sign up range or else. Okay, Shadow in the Warp. This is their once per game sort of thing that can battle shot the enemy. So unless you're against another turn in army, this should be fairly effective. Um, essentially, once per battle, you can force anybody to take battle shot tests, uh, which is nice. It's only once per game. So essentially, you want to do it. Uh, when you know, probably in either your command phase or, or their command phase, where if them failing a load of battle shot tests will swing who's controlling objectives, that's where you want to use that once per game. Keep it in your pocket, use it when you need to. Okay, going on to the detachment rule we've got here, we've got hyper adaptations. I quite like this. Um, at the start of the first battle round, you essentially just pick one of these and it's active for the whole game. So essentially, you can either get uh, exploding hits. Uh, against infantries or swarms for the entire army, that's nice. Um, or auto wounds against monsters or vehicles, that's also very nice, especially against knights. <laughs> um, and uh, then we've got one that gives uh, critical hits as precision. So that's very nice as well if you're facing an army with a lot of characters inside units. Um, obviously this is set at the start of the first battle round, so after you've already seen your opponent's army, and seen what's leading units and that sort that sort of thing, uh, so it's it's quite handy, I think for the most part. If you're if you're against a mostly vehicle army or once of army, you want to pick the uh, hyper aggression for those auto wounds. And if you're facing an army that's mostly infantry, you want to go for exploding sixes to hit. Just volume. I think I think volume is going to be be, be a thing with Tyranids in tenth, and basically roll as many sixes as you can to get your auto wounds or your exploding hits. The more dice you're rolling, the more likely you are to get sixes. So volume is definitely going to be a thing for Tyranids, in my opinion. Uh, moving on to the stratagems. Some of these are quite cool. Some of them are a bit meh. Uh, so we've got rapid regeneration. Essentially, when one of your units is getting shot at or hitting combat, you can spend a CP, get a feel-no pain uh, of six up. If it's in silence range, which most of, most of your army should be, you get a five up feel-no pain. Very nice. Uh, this is handy uh, because obviously Catalyst, the psychic power, is no longer a thing where you can point at a unit in your own army to give it a 5 up shrug into your next psychic phase. Uh, this is quite cheap at 1 CP, but bear in mind it is only for one phase. Either the shooting or the fight phase is not for an entire battle round, which obviously Catalyst was before. But I can I imagine this is going to be the, one of the, the most used stratagems for 200 players. Very nice, 1 CP, 5 up shrug on a unit. Best used on a very big unit uh, with lots and lots of models uh, or on something very, very big that your opponent wants to take out. So there we go. Uh, we've got Adrenal Surge. This is quite nice as well. It is fairly expensive at, at 2 CP, but you can pick up to two units if they're in silence range or, or just one that isn't, um, I believe. Of the two 200 units from your army that are within silence range and eligible to fight or one other 200 unit. From your army that is eligible to fight. So essentially, if your entire army is in silence range, you can target two units, two CP, uh, you get critical hits on five ups instead of six ups. So that works quite nicely with the adaptations because these are obviously lethal hits and sustained hits are um, activated, I guess, on critical hits. So if you spend two CP, you can get your sustained hits on fives and sixes to hits or your automatic wounds on hits of five and six. Very nice. Very good if you've got. Uh, a big unit about to smash something with a, lots of attacks um, or a couple of units with lots of attacks about to go in but 2cp 
fairly expensive. Maybe use that once or twice during the game at most, I feel. Death Frenzy, 1 CP. It gives you a fight on death, I think, on a 4-up, which is kind of nice. Uh, 1 CP is quite cheap as well, um, so that's not too bad. Uh, but you do do it when your target, your unit is selected, uh, so it could be a bit of a risk. You think, oh, that unit could kill my unit, so I'll spend a CP. If they end up not really killing very much, you've kind of wasted your CP. Uh, and it's only on a four up. It has the effect anyway, so mm, okay, fine, not too bad. One CP, this, this is what you do when one of your units is about to consolidate. It essentially means you can do a normal move or a big consolidation. So that's handy for movement. Movement wins games, in my opinion. The more movement you can get across the board, the more you can control the board, and the more you can score points. Not not, not bad for one CP. Very nice. Uh, essentially, so you can consolidate up to six inches instead of three, as long as you can get an engagement ring. So your normal consolidation can be six inches instead of three. Or, uh, or uh, if your unit is not, or if your, your unit is within silence range, uh, but not within engagement range of any units, you can just make a normal move up to six inches instead. Uh, I think that's probably the more useful one. So again, keeping your units in silence range is going to be key for doing all your tricks that Tyrion is like doing. Uh, other stratagems. <coughs> this one here essentially allows you to pick a unit or two units if they're in silence range to pick a different adaptation to what you chose at the start of the game. Uh, so if, for example, at the start of the game, you pick the infant, the sustained hits against infantries or swarms or beasts or whatever it was, the anti-infantry one where you get exploding sixes to hit and you've got a couple of units that are about to hit something big, um, you can give them the, the lethal hits so they auto win on sixes instead. And uh, that's not too bad. So uh, that's until the end of the battle round as well. So that's quite useful for a CP. That's handy. Being able to manipulate your army rule for a couple of your units to get you know auto wounds or exploding sixes or maybe you're about to go into a unit that's got a character in it and you want to get those precision hits instead that could be quite handy endless swarm one cp this one's quite good it's essentially you just bring back you know dead, dead models from your swarming units same as before in ninth d3 plus three models are returned to the units it's been a cp and get a few termagants back or a few hormigants not too bad Okay, fine, but they are only termagants or hormigants. But it could be useful because it is in your command phase, so you could use this to suddenly nick an objective before you, you know, work out objective scoring at the end of your command phase. So that can be handy to get you some extra victory points. And if you're going to spend command points, spend them to get victory points. Uh, a wise man once said, CP for VP. Um, okay, enhancements. These are things that you can give your characters. I think you can give up to three characters enhancements, although you cannot give them to epic heroes. So no, you cannot give Old One Eye or a Swarm Lord Adaptive Biology. Boo hoo. Uh, but I think these are costing points, I think, I believe. Uh, but also we haven't got the points yet, but some of these look really, really nice. Some of them look a bit meh. Adaptive Biology. This is a massive standout for me. Obviously, it depends on what it will cost you. But giving uh, you know one of your characters a five up shrug uh, at the start of the turn if he, if he's you know got, got less than his starting wounds it then suddenly becomes a four up shrug very nice for keeping uh, I don't know your your turbigon or, or your uh, your walking hive tyrant a bit more survivable very nice this one to extend extend silence range it's nice um, but if you build your army probably you should have silence everywhere anyway. Um, but if, if you maybe haven't got that many synaptic creatures within your list, um, getting the extra silence range for, for one of your characters could be very useful. Um, alien cunning um, redeploy, but it only happens after you've deployed, not after you've rolled to see who goes first. So it's it's handy, but to be honest, I wouldn't bother if it was uh, at the start of the first battle round, so you know who's who's going first. Much more powerful. Uh, but it's after you've deployed, so unless you want to counter deploy, I mean, it's, uh, yeah, I wouldn't really bother. Uh, perfectly adapted. This one can be handy. Um, I still don't think it's as good as adaptive biology, but obviously, if these things are costing points and it's cheaper and you can't get that one, then this could be a, a good alternative. Also, it's very good for your characters that are going in uh, leading units that have. You know, make, make mostly uh, melee damage. Want to get of engagement range, um, so this can be 
given to one of your characters and obviously if a character leads a unit uh, then essentially or it's treated as one unit um, so if you're making a charge roll for that character that's the charge roll for the unit and i think that's going to be the best use for this if you've got a brood lord for example leading some gene stealers and you really want to make sure you get your charges in give your brood lord this use it to re-roll your charge roll that's the best way to use this i think um re-rolling a hit roll or a wing roll or a damage roll is yeah it's, it's nice but how many of your characters are really going to need to re-roll a hit or a wing or a damage roll i mean i think most turn of things have fairly consistent damage and most of your characters are going to be hit on twos and some of them can re-roll wounds anyway so i think use that as a charge re-roll essentially it's going to save your cp as the game goes on okay let's move on to the data sheets i'm not going to go through all of them but i'm going to go for the standout ones and the ones that i particularly have and like using we have the winged or winged hive tyrant also known as a flyerant um a couple of things to point out with this he's gone up to a two up save very nice uh, but he's also a bit slower so yeah um but in addition, obviously, fly isn't quite as good now in temp because you can't just fly over a wall. You've got to measure your distance through the air. Uh, so flying over walls is going to be more of a problem now anyway. And in addition to that, he's lost four inches of movement. I don't think flyers are going to be able to sit behind walls now and fly over them and go and charge something as easily. Um, so that's a thing. So... The only real advantage of having a flying one is, I guess, if you give them a gun, so you can manoeuvre, so you can get line of sight to shoot things. Um, but again, if you, the guns have been nerfed as well. Heavy Venom coming now is not only deep three shots, not just flat three. Strength has stayed the same as nine, which it, it, it's it's fine. The AP has stayed the same at two. Uh, the AP staying the same at two is good because most things are losing AP, so that's good. But the strength staying at nine and not going up. When you think most of us sort of big anti-tanky guns, the strengths have gone up. Um, so it's it's kind of a side grade in terms of strength and AP, but having the swingy number of shots, although it is blast, it's nice, I guess. Um, and at damage three, it's gone down from four to three, but minus one damage isn't as much of a thing now. So I don't know. I, I think it's it's no longer an anti-tank gun. I think it's more of a let's shoot some Gravis armor guy's gun and if there's you know five in the unit I'm getting d3 plus one shots kind of thing um it's, it's more of a good anti-infantry gun now rather than sort of you know the tyranid allows cannon of um additions past um so, so, so there's that the melee weapons haven't really changed much I think they've all sort of dropped in AP um the bone swords are twin link now so you're getting the reroll wounds um which is nice um, yeah, they're, they're not bad. They can obviously deep strike. You get Shadow and the Warp and Synapse. Uh, and obviously there, is, there are a Synapse creature. Uh, the good things about the, the Hive Tyrants, in my opinion, are that you can uh, pick a unit of in 12 and you can use a stratagem for 0 CP, which is nice, even if you've already used that stratagem, that phase. So if you want to use that 5-up five up, five up Shrug stratagem, you want this guy on your list. He's, you can do that 5-up Shrug twice in any phase, and half the time it's going to cost you uh, 0 CP. It is only once per turn, but still, anything that gets you CP or saves you CP is very nice, very handy. Uh, and then at the start of the fight phase, you can pick an enemy unit in 12. Obviously, he's got to be able to see them, so I mean, that, that's a thing. Um, if you roll a 2-up, they get minus 1 to their number of attacks. So he's, 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 he's a useful buffing and debuffing character. Um, and he can lead units, I believe. Uh, oh, no, he can't, actually. Only the walking hive tyrant can. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, but, yeah, he's gone down in wounds, gone up in toughness, got a better save. He's a bit more tanky if you give him a shrug. But, yeah, not as killy now that he's slower and you've got to fly over walls rather than just sort of pretend they're not there. So, Okay. Moving on to the Walking Hive Tyrant. Now, this one can lead um, a unit, and they are Tyrant Guard, which aren't bad. Uh, they're sort of toughness 8 with a 3 up save. They're fairly chunky, um, so that's good. Again, he's got the Will of the Hive Mind ability, where you can get a free stratagem, which is nice. Uh, and this one gives off an aura. Uh, 
where 200 units within 6 inches have assault weapons, which is nice. So if you're having yeah, quite a shooty turn in army, you can run around with this chap, and you can advance and shoot. Very nice, because, you know, as I mentioned earlier, movement wins games. If you can't see something to shoot it, you can't shoot it. So being able to advance and shoot, very useful. Um, it's got a bit more toughness than the flyer. Same wounds, same armor, same armor save. Uh, and yeah, we've sort of already talked about the guns and, and, and the melee weapons and so on. So he's, he's, he's not bad, he's not bad. Uh, four from vulnerable save. Uh, the good thing about the characters now, actually, obviously in ninth edition they didn't get the count sir, but they could be protected by Tyrant Guard. Uh, the Winged Hive Tyrant can't be protected by Tyrant Guard now, but he has gone up in toughness, has got a bit of save, uh, but he has got less wounds. Um, and, and that seems to be a theme with the big Tyranid monsters, less wounds, higher toughness. Um, but they don't bracket. it. Um, they don't get worse as, as they get wounded, which is nice. So that's something to bear in mind. Okay, moving on to the Swarm Lord. I love Swarm Lords. They are amazing. They are beasts, and I think they're still a bit of a beast. He can also lead Tyrant Guard, uh, which is nice. Um, or you can just walk around by himself, really. But he doesn't get lone operatives, so he can get shot at if he's by himself. The same as the Walking Hive Tyrant. But then again, in ninth. I, I would basically just walk mine around by himself anyway, because if you're hiding behind a wall, he can't get shot at, so it's not really a problem. And then you jump him out when you need him to. Um, but yeah, movement eight, toughness ten, ten wounds. He, he's a chunky boy with a tilt save. Um, it is, uh, he's, got, he's got a little ranged psychic attack, which is quite nice. Auto hitting, d6 plus three times, strength five, minus one, two damage. Not too shabby, just killing a few marines before you go charging him. Speaking of the charge, he will have eight attacks, hitting on twos, strength nine, re-rolling wounds, because they're twin linked, at minus two, three, dim, three damage. He will be an absolute blender. Hitting on twos, wounding most infantry on twos, or most vehicles on fours, re-rolling wounds, that's really powerful. Because um, at strength nine, you can chuck him into light vehicles, or if you want to throw him into a big vehicle, you can, you can be winning on fives, but you're re-rolling, so that, He's basically good at anything. AP2, that's fine for temp. AP is getting reduced across the board. And still damage free, which is very nice. Um, other nice things he's got. Obviously, his synapse, his synapse range is 9 inches, uh, which is like one of the enhancements we saw earlier. So that's very nice. Have him in the middle. Give synapse off absolutely everywhere. Very nice. Um, and once per battle, you can debuff an opponent's stratagem by making it cost an extra CP. So, oh! Your opponent's just overwatch something. No, sorry for the rest of the game. I can make your overwatch cost 2 CP, uh, which basically means they're not going to do it. Uh, or if someone's interrupted you in combat once, you can make it cost you know, an extra CP. Or if someone's just doing a command reroll, you just think, I'm just going to make that cost 2 CP for the rest of the game. Um, you, you, you can really mess with your opponent's stratagems if you know they've got one or two that they're going to want to use a lot. Just make it cost an extra CP. Yes, that's really nice. Uh, you can only do that once he's on the battlefield, but obviously once you've done it, it's done it, even if he dies afterwards, it's still going to cost the extra CP, so that's very nice. Um, speaking of CP, he gives you an extra CP in each of your command phases. Um, he's a CP farm as well, as well as a synaptical enhancer, an absolute beast. So, depending on points, I would definitely take one of these chaps. Moving on to the Broodlord. Uh, these are kind of similar to what they were before. Uh, so Broodlords and Gene Sealers used to be able to infiltrate. Now they can just scout move, which is like a pre-game move, which is kind of as good, I guess. Um, but that's fine. Uh, <clears throat> so he's got six wounds of toughness five and a four plus save and a four plus invulnerable save. Still moves eight, you know. Um, so yeah, but he's, 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 he's basically the same. Um, his, his claws and talons now are very good though. Instead of being extra AP on wounds of six, wounds of six will do mortal wounds as a damage instead. So for every wound roll of six you do, you're doing two mortal wounds because the damage turns into mortal wounds. That's very nice. Uh, obviously his claws, they're twin linked, so he's rerolling all the wounds like he did before. So basically he's got five attacks, hit on twos. Um, so you, you should hit most of the times. Um, and then he's strength six, but you're rerolling all your wounds. And if you get any wounds of six, they're, they're, they're mortal wounds. Uh, just the normal wounds, they will be AP2 damage too, which which is fine. 
Um, he can lead a unit. He can lead a unit of gene stealers. Gene stealers we'll get to later, but they're, they're looking tasty, especially with a broodlord. Reason being, um, while a broodlord is leading a unit, they will all have devastating wounds. So this guy with a unit of 10 gene stealers all dishing out mortal wounds in combat and wounds on six. Very, very nice. Especially as you get gene stealers re-rolling wounds, um, as we'll see later, you can you can basically fish for sixes and just do a lot of mortal wounds. Um, this chap with some gene seers could be a, you know your, your counter punch or or maybe your first turn charge unit with your scout move. And if you give your brood lord the enhancement to reroll charges, it makes that first turn charge very likely. Uh, it could be a problem. Um, also, at the start of the fight phase, you can set them a unit of engagement range, and they get minus one hit. That's hilarious. So you can send your Broodlord and your Gene Steelers in. Make sure your Broodlord um, <coughs> you know, gets to an engagement range of the unit himself. Uh, and if the unit you're hitting survives, they're going to minus one hit you back. Brilliant. Okay. Moving on to the Winged Tyranid Prime. He's a new chap. Um, he's basically not how the Tyranid Prime used to be, but he's got wings, so he's a bit quicker. But as we mentioned, fly isn't as good now as it used to be. Um, he can lead a unit. I think it's uh, like warriors or gargoyles or something. Uh, and they get this thing hits one ability, which is nice, but you can sort of get that for your entire army anyway. So, meh. Nah. I mean, he's not bad at blending things, I guess. At six attacks, hit one, two. So it's around six, minus one, two damage. But, um, mm, yeah, not so many points he costs. Uh, Termagon, looking quite tanky now. The two save, toughness 11 and 16 wounds. Um, looking pretty tasty in combat as well, I have to say. Uh, you know, especially that sweep attack could definitely <laughs> mint some marines. Um, she still spawns termagants, but can't just give you a free unit now. She just puts models back into units. Um, so that's been a bit of a downgrade there. Um, and then termagants get lethal hits if they're in six. So termagants already have assault weapons, and then you get those assault weapons hitting on sixes, auto wounding. Very nice, but again. You can get lethal hits for your army wide anyway, so you're basically bringing this this girl along to basically keep your horde alive a bit longer and do a bit of do a bit of damage in combat. Uh, let's moving on to old one eye now. I like old one eye. He's always been a bit of a tank, although he's always been quite expensive in points. Obviously, we don't know those yet, but he is still a tank. He's toughness nine with two save and nine wounds. Very very nice. He also gets a five up shrug. Very very nice. He may also lead a unit of Carnifexes. So Carnifexes can be brought up into up in uh, units of two, I believe, one or two. So having this guy run around with a couple of Carnifexes will be nice because if he's leading a unit, every model in that unit, including himself, will reroll hits. That's very nice. And he also uh, <laughs> regains wounds in each player's command phase. So <laughs> he's going to be quite chunky to kill. Um, he's still a bit of a beast in combat as well. Sweep and strike. Very, very nice. Or one of those claws and talons. Uh, so you can, you can have a six attacks. 14 AP 3d6 plus one damage. Or just 12 attacks. AP 1-1 one, one damage. So it depends what you're hitting. You can deal with it. Very, very nice. Old one eye lives on. Tyranid Warriors. They're still Tyranid Warriors. They don't really change much. Still toughness five or four up save and three wounds. The weapon profiles have changed a bit, a bit less AP, and a, you know they're hitting on fours now um, with their ranged weapons. Um, but they're, they're, they're still sign ups, which is good. And you can fall back and shoot with the ones with guns, so that's, that's nice. And you can also fall back and charge as well. So they're your sort of handy sort of inventory in the mid ball, which is just going to be a nuisance, be tough to kill, do a little bit of damage, not get tied down. Uh, I think the ones with melee weapons are basically the same. Uh, although they do have a different ability. So with them at the start of the fight phase, you can select one of the following abilities. Each time a model in this unit makes an attack, we all hit roll a one. Or each time a saving throw is made, you can reroll saving throws a one. So if you're being at charge, you might think, you know what, I'll reroll the saving throws. If you're the one going in for the kill, you can reroll hit rolls a one instead just to make sure you kill what you're hitting. Um, so yeah, okay, not too bad. Okay, Tyranid Warriors. 
Uh, Termagants. We've all seen Termagants. They're basically the same. Flesh Bores no longer have AP. Good, because that was silly. Um, so, other than that, basically the same. But their ability is very nice. What's per turn when an enemy unit moves, advances, or fall back to being 9 inches of them? You can move this unit T6 inches. So, <laughs> it's going to be like a moving roadblock of Termagants. Um, the best way to stop your enemy from moving around is move bot them. If, if you've got loads of termagants running around constantly moving during your opponent's movement phase, you can really be, really be an absolute pain. So that's nice. I like that. Hormigants, they're basically the same. Um, you know, they're literally exactly the same as they were before. I think, uh, yeah, yeah, every stat has stayed the same as far as I'm aware. Uh, but they can now all just advance and charge. Just as basic now, you don't need to spend a CP to advance and charge your Hormigants, they just do it. So basically, you're going to be advancing them every single movement phase, because they haven't got any guns. So they're going to be moving 10 plus D6 inches, and then charging 3 attacks each, hit on falls, that's strength 3, minus 1 AP. Uh, strength 3 doesn't sound that great, but a de decent number of attacks, so if you imagine you've got 20 of these checks, you know, you can have 60 attacks, hit on falls, you're going to hit 30 times. And you're going to have at least 10 sixes. So if you've got sustained hits or lethal hits, that's how we be 10 wounds out of the bag already, or, or, or 10 extra hits, essentially. So it's just volume. Volume is going to be a thing for Tyranids now. Hormigants can still be a problem charging and just dealing with light infantry. Gargoyles, they're turning into wings. Yeah, they can move after they've shot sort of thing. Very nice. Bit, bit of a pain. Totscrim, Mr. Wiggly Arms, not really going to talk much about him. Not fussed by him. Tyrant Guard, okay, Tyrant Guard. These are the ones that can bodyguard your Hive Tyrant or Sworn Lord if you choose to. Um, if they do, they give that character a 5 plus feel no pain. Okay, very nice. But you probably give them your Hive Tyrant a feel no pain enhancement anyway, so fine. Um, Top plus 8 with 3 up save and 4 wounds. It's kind of what they are now, except for a ninth, they had a 2 up save and less toughness. So, okay, fine. They're not as good in combat, I don't think, compared to what they were before. Uh, they're re rolling wounds with their rending claws, but um, yeah, I don't know. You basically bring these guys along to protect your Swarm Lord. Um, we walk a knife tyrant, but depending on points, I might just may or may not bother. Um, but yeah, an interesting choice. Um, I guess another unit that can lead tyrant guard is the Neuro Tyrant, which I think is probably the best option to go for with these guys because he is a psychic monster we'll see him in a minute and uh, you, you, he's one that's a bit more fragile than your Swan Lord or your Hive Tyrant um, so that would, that would be quite nice oh look here he is the Neuro Tyrant, so yeah, toughness 8 with 9 wounds and only a 4 up save you, you want your Tyrant Guard around this chap to keep him alive basically um, he's got some really good psychic uh, ranged attacks he ignores cover and the auto hits 2d6 times. That's nice. You're gonna basically you're gonna get seven hits, but ignore cover. That's jump five, AP1, two damage. Very nice. Uh, he's he's uh, he's okay in combat, but you don't really want him in combat. Um, but what he is good, he's good at buffing things very well. While he's leading a unit, they get plus one to hit. If the target is battle shot, they get plus one to wound. So you can have this guy leading your tyrant guard and your tyrant guard hitting on twos and potentially even getting plus one to wound as well. This guy can make tyrant guard pretty pokey because they're standard, they're kind of not. Uh, but then again, if your tyrant guard are getting stuck in combat, that means this guy is stuck in combat. You don't really want him in combat. Uh, yeah, interesting. Uh, also, psychic terror if one or more the retorts from your army are on the battlefield when you do your shadow in the warp thing. Uh, you subtract more from the battle shop tests, so it's very, he makes your once per game thing better. I'll bring him along just to do that, uh, to be honest. Uh, but it also, he also makes your silence better. You can select two friendly turning units in your command phase that are within 12 inches of him, and they will remain in silence range into your next command phase. So you can pick two units within 12 units and they are in silence range, they can run off and still be within silence range until your next command phase so you can send your carnifexes off to go and smash things or your gene sealers and they'll be less likely to get battle shocked uh, which is very nice he's got a 4 plus and vulnerable save very nice okay moving on Lictor 
I have some lictors, I call them Victor. Um, basically the same sort of profile. Um, so, you know, top and six, six wounds, four up save, five plus invulnerable save. Not bad for a standalone little guy who just is a nuisance. Speaking of guys who stand around and be a nuisance, he is an infiltrator, so he can forward deploy. He also has lone operative, so you can't shoot him unless you're within 12 inches. Uh, and he has stealth, which I believe gives him minus one to hit. Um, so he's going he's to be more difficult to kill than you actually think when you look at his profile. Uh, he also has fights first, so if you charge him, he will hit you first. Do you want something with six attacks, hitting on twos, at so strength minus two AP, two damage, hitting you first? Not really, uh, especially when you consider those attacks are could be precision attacks and hit your characters. You don't really want to charge a Lictor unless you can tank him hitting you first. <laughs> <laughs> basically uh, in addition every time he kills an enemy character you get a CP v very nice uh, and once per battle range you can target him uh, with a rapid ingress stratagem and it doesn't cost anything so basically in your opponent's movement phase I think it's movement phase where the rapid ingress stratagem takes place uh, the one of the core rules well once per battle round, you, you can just chuck a lector down without it costing you any, any CP in your opponent's turn um, <laughs> that could be interesting um, but yeah these, these guys sound like an interesting choice I like them Death Leaper, he's like Elector but a little bit better um, basically um, I mean he's got a better invulnerable save um, and, he, and he's, I think he affects Battle Shock as well, yes while well, enemy unit is within 6 inches of this model worse than their leadership characteristic of models in that unit by 1 in addition in the battle shock step of your opponent's command phase, if such an enemy unit is below its starting strength, it must take a battle shock test. So he's going to affect battle shock and things, which is nice. And if this guy's reducing the leadership characteristics of models within six inches of him by one, and then you've also got the neuro tyrant making their battle shock test minus one, the two of these combined can almost force a unit to be battle shocked. Um, so that's interesting. Moving on to the Mala Scepter. Now, I haven't got one of these, but they look like absolute tanks who do a decent amount of damage. They're a toughness 11. Yes, 11. Uh, with a free up save, but I mean, the only things that are going to hurt these guys are going to be, you know, anti tank weaponry anyway, so the saving throw is irrelevant, really. Uh, he's got 14 wounds and he's got a 4 plus in vulnerable save. I mean, to be honest, you're not going to be taking many free up saves with this guy. Because all the small arms will bounce off, so you'll be having four up saves all the time, basically. Um, his psychic attack is blast, which is nice. So if you're hitting infantry, which is probably what you want to be hitting, um, the best target for this is probably terminators. Um, so unit of five terminators, let's say for example, you have D6 plus four attacks because of blast. Hit on threes, so of ten, so you're winning them on twos. Minus two AP, so they put them on their invulnerable save, three damage apiece. Every failed save, dead terminator. Um, that's its ideal target, but at strength 10 you can hit vehicles with it as well. Yeah, you can blend whatever infantry you want really. Uh, but I was just using Terminators as probably the best example. D6 plus 3 with Blast is good. If you're hitting a unit of 10, that's D6 plus 5 attacks. It's, it, can be, it can be a bit tasty. He's also quite good in combat with a sweep attack, having 6 of them. Strength 7, damage 2, that's quite nice. Or just a few strike attacks, which have 9 d6 plus 1 damage. But his main thing is psychic, psychically ranging, hitting uh, opponents' units. Uh, good strength, good damage, and good volume of them as well. If you think you've got these d6 plus 3 attacks combined with your either exploding 6s or your 6s auto wounding, volume is a thing with Tyranids. Bring volume, pump up the volume, pump up the base. Um, his, his psychic ability over here is quite nice while the enemy unit is within 6 inches of this model each time each time a model in that unit makes an attack they are minus 1 to hit you if they're below half strength they're also minus 1 to wound you so he's massively debuffing units as well which is just hilarious so basically you just charge him at the enemy and go if you can't kill me you're going to have problems he's very nice I like him he does degrade he gets minus 1 to hit okay fine um, but there we go, one mana scepter, very nice. Fire walls, they've been nerfed a little bit, don't really want to talk much about them, they're just guys walking around with heavy flamers. 
Uh, horror specs, he's a bit of a tank. He's still a tank. He's very tanky, similar to Mr. Maliceptor. Then and Fropes. These guys are an interesting choice. They were kind of an interesting choice before. Um, they're minus one hit now, and they can make other things minus one hit. Um, unless they're monsters, and things will also gain the benefit of cover near them. Uh, but they're not really any good in combat. They're not that difficult to kill. It's just three wins with a four up save, and times five. It's, yeah, it'll depend how many points they are. If these guys cost a decent amount of points, if they're cheap enough, maybe you can put a few of them in, in the middle of your army. Um, but to be honest, you're paying points just to make some of your units get the benefit of cover and some of them be minus one to hit. If you're playing with lots of terrain, you'll have lots of things in cover and not and be hidden anyway. Um, so yeah, interesting choice. Von Ryan's Leapers. I don't know who Von Ryan is, uh, but apparently he's named these guys after himself. Uh, these like lictors get fight first, uh, and they get stealth. They can also infiltrate, and um, they can hurriedly intervene for zero CP. Very nice. They're not quite as tanky as lictors though, with uh, less wounds and a worse invulnerable save. Um, but they're just as quick and, and almost as good in combat. Their attacks only hit on threes and not twos. Well, they're not damaged too, but they're not bad little sort of anti chaff units. Um, and they can also be a bit of a nuisance again with fight first. If you charge them, you're going to get hit first. These can come in units, I think, up three or something, uh, three to six. Um, personally, I think I'll just have lictors because you can't target them <laughs> unless you're within 12 inches of them for a start. Um, but yeah, okay, they're not bad. Okay, right, Noragons. They're Noragons, I mean, okay, they, they give off Synapse, but they don't really kill anything, they don't really do anything other than protect your Tyrant. but to be honest, he's better off with Tyrant Guard around him, so I'll just skip past these, they're pretty useless. Ah, uh, the Brain Bugs, here we are, the Zone Thropes. Uh, Neurothropes aren't a thing anymore, instead Neurothropes are just essentially squad leaders for Zone Thropes. Um, so yeah, Zone Thropes. Still toughness 5, 5 up save, 4 plus invulnerable save, so they're still quite tanky. Uh, and you've got 3 wounds now, though. I think they had 4 in ninth, although I might be mistaken. Uh, but yes, yeah, so still basically the same in terms of durability. Um, obviously, they're synapse, they can fly their infantry so they can you know, go through walls and things, which is nice. Um, obviously, they don't have the, uh, the psychic power smite anymore, then so they have something called warp blast. Um, which is good, so you can you can do a, a focus witch fire or a normal witch fire. Neither are hazardous, so they cannot harm themselves by doing these smites, which is nice. Um, which is very nice. So instead, each zone throat, So let's say you got unit of six, each zone throat will give you could give you d three attacks. That's six d three. That's nice. At blast, that could be very nice against a unit of five intercessors, for example. Six d three plus five. Oh. That could be nice. Um, hit on threes, strength seven, AP two, D three damage. So that's the sort of psychic like power that you would use against, you know, intercessors or chaff or you know your bog standard sort of infantry. D three damage is nice against two wound infantry. AP two is fine. Strength seven is fine. Uh, and it's a decent number of attacks as well. D three each if there's six of them. And obviously if they're blasty, you get even more. That's nice. Um, or you get the focused witch fire. Which is lethal hits, so if you hit on a six, you auto wound, which is, is nice, but you're not going to have that many attacks. You're only going to have six of the entire unit if you've got a unit of six, because each one will have one attack each. It will hit on a three. It's strength 12, though, minus three, d6 plus one damage. These are 24 inch LAS cannons, which are auto hitting on sixes. That's the way you want to look at that, because that is literally the profile of a LAS cannon, except for 24 inches. So if you've got six LAS cannon shots, um, you know, one of them's, you know, a couple are going to miss. One's, one's, one of them's also going to auto wound. Um, <laughs> that's pretty tasty. I like that. Very nice. Um, so yeah, it'd be interesting if you want a big unit or small, or smaller units of these guys going around. Uh, with strategic reserves being a thing and being free, you have twenty-four inch range shooting attacks. You could just put you know, six of them in strategic reserves, turn two, bring them on where you want to shoot something, and just psychically blast something off the table. Um, that could be a thing. Um, 
Although if you start them on the table, they will give all friendly turret units within six inches of them a six plus invulnerable save. It does not sound like much, but if you've got a unit of these and you string them out, you could pretty much give your entire army a six plus invulnerable save if you really want to. Um, so that's that's handy. Six of invulnerable saves is better than no invulnerable save. Spirit Leech, another another aura. While this unit contains a Neurofrope, which well it should do because he's your squad leader, you don't want him dying. Um, while enemy units are in six inches of them, and they fail a battle shock test, it suffers D3 mortal wounds. And then the Zernfrope's units regain D3 lost wounds. So that's a thing. Um, yeah, okay. <laughs> That's them. Uh, Gene Steelers, the Steelers of Denim across the 41st Millennium Galaxy. Um, they're good. Um, they're a lot better than they used to be. They now have two wounds. Other than that, they're exactly the same. Um, but doubling the number of wounds is very nice. It means your anti chaff guns are going to find these guys more difficult to take down at two wounds, toughness four. Um, you know, your bolt guns are going to have to put twice as many bolt guns into these guys to bring them down, essentially. Um, which is nice. If you're shooting them with AP, you just don't care because they've got an invulnerable save. Um, so, yeah. They're scouts, as I mentioned with the Broodlord earlier, so they can get an 8 inch pre game move. So, if you're going first, you can move these guys 16 inches up the table and then charge something, which in most cases is going to mean probably an 8 inch charge. Uh, and obviously, if you give the Broodlord the enhancement to reroll a charge roll, that's an 8 inch rerollable charge of a unit at Gene Seeders turn 1. Ouch. Um, they got four attacks each, hitting on twos. Very, very tasty. Um, so as you're, you know, you've got unit of 10, that's 40 attacks hitting on twos. You're going to hit, like, what, five times? That's pretty good. Uh, strength four, AP two, damage one, that's fine. Um, if they're making an attack that you can reroll wound rolls of one, um, if the target is within range of an objective marker, you can reroll all wounds. Now, if you combine that with the Brood Lord giving the unit devastating wounds, it could be painful for your opponent. There we go. Gene Sears, like them. Right, Raveners. The same sort of thing as they could do before. They can deep strike. You know, there we go. And you can sort of put them back off the battlefield and put them back into reserves, which is nice. They're similar to what they were before. Fairly tough. Decent number of wounds. An okay save. Decent number of attacks, a decent strength for no real AP though, but volume. Going with the volume of attacks. Volume is a thing for Tyranids. Ripper Swarms, they're annoying. They can reduce objective control characteristics for units, but they're not going to kill anything. That's going to be annoying. So there we go, Ripper Swarms. Uh, Parasite of Mortrex. Um, I'm not sure what to think of this guy. He can't be shot at unless you're in 12 inches now, which is nice. And he's minus one to hit, which is nice. And he can deep strike, which is nice. Um, he's no longer synapse like he was before. Um, so, okay, fine. He doesn't have the keyword synapse. He's got his one attack with his barbed ovipositor, which is nice. And it'll wound all infantry on three plus. And he always gets one attack on that hit on a two. So basically, you hit on a two with that one attack, you're wounding on a three. Uh, you don't really care about the strength because you're going to hit infantry with it. AP2 free damage, that's nice. Not amazing, but it's not bad. Uh, but when you do kill a model with that, you, you get a new Ripper Swarm unit consisting of D3 models uh, within range of it. So he just goes around poking infantry and making Ripper Swarms pop up, basically, <laughs> which is nice. Um, his clawed limbs are okay. Again, they're not amazing. He's not really going to walk up to a unit and murder it. Essentially, he can walk up and give you Ripper Swarms and just be a nuisance. Um, at the start of the fight phase, you can select one enemy unit of engagement range of him, and that unit must take a battle shock test, which is very nice. Again, being a nuisance, it, this guy combined with the Ripper Swarms will just deny your opponent objectives. Don't expect them to do anything else other than that. Morlock, he's good. He's, he's still an infantry blender with 16 attacks. It's from fate minus two, one damage. Volume of attacks is a thing, and you can uh, deep strike and do mortal wounds when he pops up like before. So that's nice. He's toughness 10 now and 14 wounds, so that's nice. Uh, still only a threat save, no invulnerable save, but toughness 10 that should stop him from getting shot down by bolt guns. Uh, whereas I think before they were toughness 6 or 7, so bolt guns could be quite effective at killing Morlocks, not anymore. 
Uh, moving on to the Trigon, similar story with this chap. He's also a toughness 10 now, so that's nice. Again, he can deep strike. Um, he does have the ability to deep strike three inches away from the enemy, but I don't know why you would, because when you do, you then can't charge. So, yeah, okay. Um, okay. Um, he's got his little shooting attack thing again. Sustained, sustained hits two, which is nice, but he's only got six attacks. So if you get one six, you get two experience. Big whoop. Um, strength of five, no AP, one damage. It's not really going to kill anything apart from chaff, but okay, fine. Uh, but what he is good at is smashing things in combat. 12 attacks, hit on freeze. Um, strength nine, AP two, three damage. So with those 12 attacks, you're going to hit eight times on average. So you're up nine, you're going to infantry on two. So I mean, that's that's seven infantry having you know minus two free damage. Or uh, you know you could maybe have a go at hitting lighter vehicles as well and other monsters and things. Uh, but yeah, he, he can take out the intercessors, gravis, terminators pretty effectively. Um, obviously, gravis and terminators have just five now. He's only strength nine, but most other infantry and things he can walk up to and and you know give them a good. A good sorting out with those Simon Talons. Spores, they do mortal wounds, they float around, they're annoying. Spore Mines, they can do mortal wounds, they float around, they're annoying. Um, Excrins. Got up from toughness 8 to toughness 10, which is nice. He dropped the wound <coughs> from 15 to 14. I think it was 15 or 16 before, but he's got 14 now, still a decent amount. And he has a free up save. Again, though, because of the toughness 10, you're not really going to be making many free up saves because light arms are just going to bounce off. Um, so it's the, it's the weapons with AP which are really going to hit, you know, hurt this guy. And he doesn't have an invulnerable save um, like before. I don't think there's any way of giving him one unless you have zone frogs nearby. And then that's only a six up in bar. So maybe having zone frogs float around with exocrines might be an idea. You know, if this guy's shooting things and the zone frogs shooting things. That could work. Uh, the bioplasma cannon now is heavy, which is nice. It means if you stay still, you then get plus one hit. So he's hitting on twos. Oh, that could be fun. Um, it's still blast, same range. Um, instead of being six plus D three hits now, though, it is D six plus three, so it's a little bit more swingy. But it being blast actually counteracts that quite nicely. Um, so if you're shooting a unit of five space marines, for example, it's D six plus four attacks. If you're shooting a unit of ten space marines, it's D six plus five attacks. Um, that could be nice. Um, it's still strength 8, it's still free damage, it's gone down from AP4 to AP3, but that's fine because everything's dropped AP in this edition pretty much. Um, so something still being AP3 to free damage is very tasty. Trip hasn't gone up though, so it's not. It's no longer the sort of anti-anything gun that it was before. Strength 8 was very good before when you know most vehicles were only toughness 7 or toughness 8. Now that most vehicles are going to be higher than toughness 8, you're going to be wounding vehicles on 5s with this. Um, but it's from 8, minus 3, 3 damage and blast. Essentially, this just takes that, takes chunks out of enemy infantry. That's what this does. And it does it very well. Um, powerful limbs, yeah, you don't really care about that. You don't want to in combat. Um, in the shooting phase, though, after he shot an enemy unit that's been hit by at least one of those attacks, which it should be if you stay still and you hit on 2s, um, every other time another friendly tyranny unit makes an attack against that unit, you can reroll the hit roll of one. So what you do is you shoot an X at something. Um, you know, let's say there's a big unit of and terminators walking towards you. You think, right, I'm gonna shoot my X at that. Might get a couple of terminators if you're lucky. Okay, cool. But then anything else that then shoots that unit of terminators, for example, will then reroll hit rolls of one. Um, so that's very very nice. Um, yeah, I like these guys. Still very good. Still very good anti-infantry. Big thing at the back. Blasting infantry to bits. Not bad against vehicles as well. You're moving, moving most vehicles on fives, but we have a decent number of attacks and hitting on twos. Minus three AP, free damage. It can take a few chunks out of vehicles and things as well. Um, he does break it though. Minus one hit um, if, if he's only got five wounds left or less. But you get a plus one hit if you stay still. So, yeah, okay. Um, Biovores, they're like mini screens. Not as powerful, but same sort of thing. Uh, except for they get devastating wounds and indirect fire, which is interesting. They, they launch spore mines all over the place, and spore mines do mortal wounds and things. So yeah, okay, they, they, they are what they are. Carn effects now. Carn effects are really good again. They're still gonna be really good. They still got a tough save. They've got eight wounds and they're toughness nine, so they are tough as nails. Small arms will bounce off these bad boys. Um, 
um, anti-tank weaponry at toughness 9 is what you're going to need to bring these things down with a total saving with 8 wounds and AP being reduced by most things across the board they should be quite chunky um, so that's good um, they also have something called blistering assault so if you shoot a unit that can't affect this and you take at least one wound off them they can run and start running towards you d6 plus 2 inches um, yeah so you're going to kind of want to shoot the effects because you don't want to get near you but if you don't kill them they will run towards you and then they will smash you um, so that, that's interesting that's fun so since you've got these guys running towards you when you shoot them and you've got termagants running away from you or move blocking you when you move towards them so <laughs> fun uh, ranged weapons um, yeah we talked about heavy fan and cannons sort of being worse strangled form cannons they're okay they aren't going to be the sort of shoot and smash things in combat units that they were before. They're going to sort of be okay at both rather than good at both. Um, but heavy venom cannons being blast, they're sort of more infantry based now, uh, similar to the Exprin basically. But they're only hit on fours now. There's no way to make these guys hit on threes, um, which is interesting. You can make them reroll all hits if you've got one eye leading a unit of them, but they only come in units of a maximum of two, I believe. Uh, Yes, so okay, fine. Um, melee weapons only hit on force as well in combat. That that's mm, interesting. I think the only way to make card effects is work now is literally to have old one eye running around with a couple of them um, to get the rerolls and, and things. And then not only that, <laughs> when you shoot a card effects and win a card effects, you then get the other card effects and old one eye running towards you. <laughs> oh, you don't want that. Uh, but yeah, so they hit on fours, but they do have lots of attacks at good strength, decent AP, and good damage. So they're, they're still pretty good in combat. There's, there's no denying that. If you've got one kitted out with Siding Talons, you can have eight attacks with Siding Talons. Um, so so that's a thing. Um, yeah. <clears throat> As standard, they come with Siding Talons, extra Siding Talons, and Claws and teeth you can get your extra siphon talons replaced with a gun or you can get your siphon talons replaced with crushing claws so essentially you drop the extra siphon talons for your gun if you want to shoot you want and you still get six siphon talon attacks in your gun or you drop your normal siphon talons for your claws for example so then you can have your four claw attacks and your two siphon talon attacks so yeah, interesting. Okay, I think I think they're going to be difficult to kill. They're going to be running towards you and doing damage, but the damage isn't going to be as efficient as it was in ninth. Uh, and obviously that they don't have the minus one damage anymore. But I think minus one damage is all, all almost disappeared. Um, there's literally going to be a couple of things with it, and that's it really. Um, but yeah, kind of fixes. I think they're going to be good. Running over one eye. Cool, kind of fixes. Screamer killers. Now, if you want kind of fixes to smash things in combat, you bring a screamer killer because they hit on freeze in combat with 10 attacks. It's around 10 minus 2 free damage. These are the guys you want getting in combat. If you want combat kind of fixes, take a screamer killer. If you want kind of fixes that can do a bit of everything and want running around with a one eye, then you pick your normal kind of fixes. So, screamer killers, 10 wounds, toughness 9. Um, that's an extra 2 wounds more than a normal kind of fix, which is interesting. Um, in combat, they, they'll smell smashing a bit in combat. And they also get a bit of a, a plasmic scream attack, um, which is an assault weapon, which is nice. So you can advance and shoot it. So if, you, if, if you're not going to get in charge range that turn, you might as well advance and still shoot. And it's blast, so it's, it's not a bad little anti infantry attack. T6 plus 3, you can hit on falls though, but fine. Strength 8 minus 2, not bad, okay. And uh, in your shooting phase, after this model has shot, you can select one enemy unit that's been hit by those attacks. So this is the, the spitty attack. That unit must take a battle shot test, subtracting one from it. So Tyranids are definitely the army that affects battle shot quite a lot. I mean, they are big scary monsters after all, so it kind of makes sense. And you can only have one of these per unit as well, which is interesting. Okay, Hive Guard. Um, I've got a lot to say about these Hive Guard. Hive Guard and Ape were the ultimate killing machine of the Tyranids. Um, in ninth, they got nerfed 
so they still weren't bad but they were quite expensive for what they could do um, and now they're interesting uh, obviously we don't know the points yet um, but essentially they've kept the four wounds they've kept the three up save but they've gone up to seven so they're, they're a bit more chunky which, which is good you're going to need anti-tank weaponry or plasma to really hurt these guys um, in combat they're not bad but there isn't any AP or damage but you don't want these guys in combat so let's get stuck in to the ranged attacks so impaler cannon it's heavy what does that mean you stay do we get a plus one a hit uh, they normally hit on fours with an impaler cannon so that goes to hitting on threes with the impaler cannon if you stay still which is nice um, if you have indirect fire it's it, it can shoot things you can't see and when it's doing that then you get in, you might just want to hit again so you're back to hitting on fours but hitting on fours with indirect fire that's okay it has a 36 inch range again now which is nice which actually makes sense for something that's got indirect fire having a 24 inch range on something that's indirect fire is completely pointless so if it's within 24 inches you can probably just move and shoot it anyway uh, so yeah having a 36 inch range at indirect fire hitting on fours when you stay still because you're going to stay still if you're shooting indirect anyway uh, with four attacks each this is beginning to look good and then you look at the strength it's gone from 8 in 8th edition to 7 in 9th, down to 5. 5. It's wounding Marines on 3s, which is fine, but it's wounding Terminators on 4s. Okay. Fine. Strength 5. Okay, we got more attacks, so that helps, right? But the AP's gone to AP 1. Okay, I think that's fine, because everything's AP has gone down, so that's not a biggie. But the damage has also gone down from 2 to 1. So the AP is fine, the bishop skill is fine, the fact that it's heavy is fine, the fact that the range has gone up is good, the number of attacks has gone up is good, but the strength has gone down and the damage is halved. Um, so let's say, I think you, you can come in units of 6, let's have a look, yeah, you can have 6 of these in a unit. 6 times 4 attacks, that sounds really nice. That's 24 attacks. Hitting on 4s, you're going to hit 12 times. Okay, let's say you're shooting, I don't know, an intercessor, right? You can move the intercessors, what, eight times? You're going to throw up saves, you're going to kill a couple of intercessors at one damage each. Okay, okay, fine. The, the, these are going to be anti chaff indirect fire, basically. If someone's got some guardsmen sitting behind a wall and objective, these guys can take them out. If someone's got some. Uh, I don't know, cultists sitting on an objective behind a wall, these guys can take them out. If someone's got some marines sitting behind a wall in cover, th these guys ain't going to do much. Um, so, yeah, interesting. Um, shot cannon, that's looking good. It automatically wounds vehicles on twos, similar to before, which is nice, 24 inch range. Okay, two attacks each. Okay, but it hits on threes. Okay, fine. Strap 7, but you don't really care about that because it's an anti-vehicle gun and you're going to win on 2s anyway, so strap is irrelevant. AP 1 against vehicles, that's fine because they can't gain benefits of cover. Um, 3 damage apiece, that could be painful. Um, so, so these are going to be your anti-tank guns, really. Um, I think the shot cannon's better than the impaler cannon. If you've got you know, 6 of these, you put them in reserve. Bring them on from reserve where you can shoot something within 24 inches. You're going to have 12 attacks. Hit on threes, you're going to hit them eight times, and you're going to wound them seven times because you win on twos. Um, so seven seven saves at AP1, three damage. They, they, they can damage a vehicle, or you know, if, if you're lucky, kill it. Um, so that's interesting. Um, it, it depends on points on these guys, though. That's the problem. They're not massively durable. Uh, three up save and toughness seven. Um, obviously, they're having a three up save, that means they only really get the benefit of cover if something's got AP. So they've kind of got Armour of Contempt, um, or how Armour of Contempt used to be. Um, one thing I'm thinking of doing with these guys is, uh, obviously, the, the Etzcrins, when they shoot something, you can then reroll hit rolls of one if everything else shoots. is nice. With your shot cannon, so your Etzcrin could shoot a, a vehicle. Um, and then these guys then hit the vehicle on freeze rolling ones. So that's nice. Uh, or, or the Etzcrin could shoot some infantry, and these, then these guys can hit the infantry. Hit on freeze, rolling ones. 
the way I see these guys working, obviously it's depending on points, whether people actually use them or not. Uh, but if they're cheap enough, <clears throat> what you want is six of these parked on your home objective with Baylor like cannons, staying still, so you get that heavy, plus one to hit counteracting the indirect fire um, thing, and just sitting on your home objective and just pumping up 24 shots every turn without having any return fire. Um, and having the ability to touch units you can't see is, is always nice. Um, if you're facing anything but Marines or, or Chaos Marines or Custodes, they're going to have chaff sort of units you can take out sitting on objectives. And they have something nice as well called a defensive stance, which means each time this target, you target this unit with the, over, the uh, Overwatch strat, hits are scored on a 5+. See overwatching on fires with these guys, or if they're on a home objective, which they will be because you sit on your home objective behind a wall in direct fire with your impaler cannon, you're overwatching on fours with these guys. So, what I see these guys doing is sitting on your home objective in cover behind a wall so they can't get shot at, <clears throat> putting out shots after shots after shots. Volume of fire will be a thing. Now, if you think you got six of these pumping out 24 shots a turn. Uh, and you go for the exploding sixes or the sixes also wounding thing for your army roll, it's, it's going to add up. It's going to add up. You, you're going to start wounding things more. You start, you start, or if you can, you know, they're going to start doing damage. AP one on one damage isn't great for the Impaler Cannon, but against infantry, it's, it's just volume of attacks. You will start to bring down units um, without getting touched in return. And, um, Obviously, Overwatch can be used in both the, the movement phase and the charge phase now. So you could essentially, for a couple of CP, obviously, uh, pump out 48 shots in your opponent's turn with a unit of Hive Guard sitting on a wall, shooting whatever you want within, I think, 24 inches of Overwatch. If something moves within 24 inches of one of your units. Um, so, yeah, this is going to be the Overwatch unit of death. Sitting on a wall, just putting shots and shots and shots and shots whatever moves within range of them is going to get overwatched and get shot at hitting on fours so if anyone's got li 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 like infantry running around to nick an objective you can go nah, I'm going to overwatch them oh that, that light unit of infantry used to nick that objective is now dead before they even did anything oh they're not dead yet now they're going to charge me I'll overwatch again now they're dead um, so yeah these are going to do as much damage in your opponent's turn as you are on your turn um, obviously it's going to cost CP um, but yeah, these are interesting. It all depends on how many points they cost. Um, Tron effects, these are absolute tanks, they should be called tank effects. They are toughness 12 with a top save and 16 wounds. I mean, that's just brilliant. Um, very chunky, and they also reduce damage by one, which is big because we haven't seen that much so far in 10th edition. Death Guard haven't got it, Dreadnoughts haven't got it. Carnifex haven't gone it. I thought it had gone completely. t fexes have got minus one damage. So maybe you're only going to see minus one damage on really big chunky things now, which is interesting. t even having minus one damage, that's nice. Especially on something with that many wounds. Um, okay, what else can he do? He gets bracketed. Well, yeah, he's got those wounds. He has powerful limbs, but you don't really want him in combat. What you want to do is shooting stuff. He gets an acid spray. He can also hit D6 plus six times. That's jump six, AP two, two damage. Really good at melting marines. I like it. You can have the flesh bore or hive, which has 20 attacks. <laughs> 20 attacks and it's heavy. So if you stay still and you can see what you're going to shoot at, you can have 20 attacks hit on twos. And if they're hitting a unit, your ex already shot at, you're hitting on twos and rolling on ones. You're going to get lots of hits. Sustained hits as well. Sixes will explode. Um, if you go for the sustained hits against infantry for your army ride rule, then you get double exploding. Um, if you go for lethal hits against vehicles, you can get exploding sixes and sixes also wounding vehicles. Uh, and it re-rolls wounds as well, twin link. That's a lot of hits, re-rolling wounds. Strength five, that's not bad. But then it gets worse. AP nothing, damage one. Against chaff, it's going to absolutely murder any horde unit running across the battlefield but nothing else but if you face big things you want the rupture cannon it's heavy so if you stay still you're hitting on twos 48 inch range two attacks two attacks hit on twos i like the sound of that they're gonna hit 
Especially if you're hitting something. Your Exocrine's already hit, and you're hitting on twos, rolling ones. It's strength 18. Some vehicles are going to win on twos. The rest you're going to win on threes. That's nice. AP4. Brilliant. 2d6 damage. I like it. Damage is very swingy, but on average, 7 damage. Not too shabby. I like that. Interesting. Okay, moving on. The Tyrannocyte. This is your little transport thing, I believe. Nobody really cares about that. Although it does have 10 wins, toughness, 9 of free up saves. So it's actually quite durable, and it's a deep strike in transport. It is the Tyranid Drop Pod. Um, I guess you could drop down some shooty Tyranid Warriors. They'd get out and shoot something. Or, or maybe, maybe, have some Hive Guard in it. Just an idea. And then, you know, you can uh, drop down some Hive Guard within this thing. With some shot cannons and absolutely murder a vehicle. But then again, seeing as the reserves are free now. Yeah, okay. It can transport lots of infantry. Of course it can. Right, Hive Crone. Little anti-flyer flyer. He's still an anti-flyer flyer. If he hits something, that's shooting fly. If he shoots something, that's fly. He gets plus one hit. That's nice. Okay, fine. He's now got 12 wounds. Toughness 9. He moves 20 inches. And he's got a free up safe. Okay, cool. Um, his guns are pretty naff. Yeah, they, they just are. Uh, <laughs> I mean, this, this, this isn't too bad. The t Tentaclids, whatever the hell it's called. Anti-vehicle 4 plus devastating wounds. Okay. But Shrimp 7, no AP, 2 damage. Yeah, it's not that great. Wouldn't bother. The Harpy. The bane of people at the start of the 9th edition codex. Uh, got nerfed because flyers have to start off the board now. And it's been nerfed again. Although it is more durable, it's now Toughness 9. Very nice. Um, but obviously Heavy Venom Cannon's got nerfed quite a bit by going to D3 shots and going down their damage. Um, in addition, the Twin Heavy Venom Cannon is not two Heavy Venom Cannons anymore. It's a Twin Linked Heavy Venom Cannon, which means you can reroll wounds, but it doesn't mean you get two D3 shots. It just, it's just D D3 shots. Um, I can't see that many people taking these. Um, okay, the spore assist thing. It shoots out spores and things. It can do a little bit of damage with its guns, but yeah, okay. They're kind of like normal venom cannons. They're not bad. Yeah, fine. What else we got here? The Psychophage, the new anti psycho monster. I like this. This is good. It's got 10 wounds at stuff as 9 with 3 at save. It doesn't have an invulnerable save, but you park it next to his own throat, you get a nice invulnerable save. It has a fill no pain of 5 up. That's very nice. And all turnids within six inches have a feel no pain. Six up. Very nice. If it has a melee attack against a unit that's below half starting strength, you get plus one a hit. If it's attacking a unit in combat that's below half strength, you get plus one a wound as well. Which sounds nice. But then you look at his melee attacks and it's sort of like, mm, it's okay. I mean, it's anti psycho 2 plus, which is nice. And you can do devastating wounds on wounds of six. But you're only having d6 plus one attacks, so it's swingy as a swing. Um, it's got weapon skill 3 plus, which is nice. You know, 6 AP 1, 2 damage. Okay, yeah, he can maybe handle his own against some intercessors, but he's not a, he's not a full-on melee, melee monster. Um, and his, his shooting attack's not too bad. You know, D6 automatic hitting, things that ignore cover. He's basically got a heavy flamer. That's strength 6 AP 1, damage 1. But what you do, you bring him along to give him everything else feel no pains. That's why you bring him along. In my opinion, bring him along to make everything around him more durable. Um, so again, his points are going to be a thing. Is it worth paying the points for this guy? He's just to give units a six-up shrug. I don't know. I don't know. This, this is a bit like the venom throat. You're paying points for a unit that doesn't really do any damage, but helps things near them be more durable. But him and himself isn't really that durable. He's toughness nine. Okay. 10 wounds. He's effectively a rhino with a 5 up shrug. Um, yeah. Okay. Burbgorns. I believe this is the last one. I don't know why these two units got put at the end. Maybe they couldn't think about what category to put them in. Um, the Burbgorns. These are interesting. These have got two wounds. They're tough as four. They're fraught save. So quite chunky for little gaunts. I must say. Um, they're not amazingly massively good killing things, although they can be an absolute nuisance. They each have a bio cannon which has d6 shots hitting on fours, it's from five. Okay, fine. 
not bad. You can have a unit of what, five to ten or something. So yeah, you can have a unit of five, let's say. You get five D6 shots, you're gonna hit something. Um, and that's all that really matters. Because if they hit something, that's infantry. Essentially until the end of your opponent's next turn, they have minus two to their move, advance, and charge rolls. You can seriously slow people down with these things. Three units of five of these, slowing down infantry, that's big. Movement wins games. You are slowing things down. And things like Death Guard, which you used to be able to ignore move charge modifiers, and their Blight Lords now move four inches. You can make Blight Lords half as quick as they are, and they're already slow. Um, so, yeah, against slow units, like your standard infantry, these guys are really going to mess up their movement. Against things like Eldari, and things that zip around the battlefield, they're not going to make any difference, really. Um, but against your bog standard infantry that sort of marches forward with their inexorable advance, for example, they're going to be going a lot slower. These guys are massively going to help with board control, so take some of them. Uh, and that's literally it. I skipped some units, but I skipped most of the units I skipped were things that I haven't got or don't really find interesting. Um, but overall, I think it looks pretty good. Um, this could be massively useful, the Shadow and the Warp, if you time it right. And there are ways that you can make it better. Synapse is still very good. They have some really annoying units, uh, like Barbgaunts, Termagaunts. They've got some really nice buffing units. And they've got some really good damage dealing units. But because of this, the detachment rule, I strongly believe volume is the way to go with Tyranids. If you keep throwing dice, you're going to get sixes at some point. Uh, the traps are really nice as well. Enhancements are nice. Um, so I think it essentially comes down to how many points things are going to be. But so far, from what I see, I like it. Interesting. Nothing is obviously amazing, and nothing is obviously bad. Uh, obviously. We don't know the points, we can't say that for sure. I mean, if Hive Guard is still going to be really expensive, <laughs> then they're going to be massively bad. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be interesting. I like it. I like it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope it hasn't been too boring. And uh, we'll see you in the next one.